Hey, this is Leo, and this is a quick demo of my DCTL utilities for DaVinci Resolve. Let's get started with the hue highlighter. I'll make sure that I'm currently in the timeline color grade. Then I will drag the DCTL effect on my grading node and then select hue highlighter. By default, the hue highlighter targets skin tones. So correct skin tones are orange. If it's a bit too magenta, you'll see it highlighted in magenta. And if it's too green, you'll see it highlighted in green. In this case, it seems that the footage is just a little bit too magenta. So let me go to the clip here, add a serial node, and then just bring the tint back a bit into the greens. Now let's make a comparison. I'll disable this, and then I will show you a before and an after. The hue highlighter can also display non-matching colors in black and white. So that lets you put a bit more focus on the skin tones in this case, or it can show only matching hues, which just blacks out the rest of the image. You can also display matching hues with 50% lightness, which makes matching colors a bit more visible. To show you how the first three sliders work, let me jump to the color wheel example here. Let me turn this to grayscale. And now you can see three kind of color areas. The first slider modifies the hue that we want to target. The second slider modifies the acceptable range of the hue. So we can accept more hues around this target hue or less. And then we have a slider that allows us to show hue deviation. So if we turn this up, we can see the green and magenta colors expanding. And if we turn it down, they will shrink. Let me just reset these values. So we're back to skin tone indication. And maybe let's turn on grayscale. Now to see if all of these clips have proper skin tones, I can just right click one of them and then click on update all thumbnails. You'll now see, especially if I go to the light box, that most of these clips have proper skin tones. This one maybe I could adjust just a little bit. Let me go back to the clip and make it just a little bit warmer. Now you don't necessarily have to use this tool to um, check skin tones. You can also use it to check the color of objects, for example, that appear in multiple scenes. And to do this, let me just go here. And I would like to target kind of this logo of the hotel that we filmed. So I will adjust the target hue until I see the logo highlighted. That looks about right. And we can maybe increase the acceptable range here. That looks good. Let's check on this one maybe. This looks good as well. But with this one, it seems like the logo is just a bit blue, so we can fix that. And there we go. Let me turn off the DCTL here. And now the logo has the same hue in all shots. Next, I will show you the saturation highlighter. And this works similar to the hue highlighter in that you can set a target saturation in this case and an acceptable range and a fall off. Let's say I want to target just colors that aren't saturated at all. I'll just keep these values as is. I can maybe increase the acceptable range and I could also increase the falloff if I want to accept a few more colors. Now all of the colors that match the target saturation are highlighted in green. And now if I move the target saturation up, I can see different parts of the image being highlighted. If I only want to see the parts of the image that match the target saturation, I can check this checkbox. And now you see, for example, all of the neutral whites in this image. And if I increase the acceptable range, slowly you will see colors with a bit more saturation. I can also use this tool to check whether some colors are too saturated, for example. To do that, I will just put the target saturation to 100% and then increase the acceptable range. So for example, if my acceptable range is at 10%, then all saturations from 90% to 100% would be highlighted. Let's increase this further. We don't have a lot of extremely saturated colors in this image. So uh, as I increase this, you'll see that the blues in the background are the most saturated colors in this image. If you don't want to see the colors highlighted in green, you can also check the show matching colors with 50% lightness box. And that shows the original color just with the lightness set to 50%. So if I were to increase the acceptable range, you'll see, for example, that skin tones are using different colors to be highlighted. With this checkbox enabled, you could also set the target saturation to 0.5 
and the acceptable range all the way up to 0.6 and now you see the entire image with the lightness set to 50% so you can just focus on the colors and on the saturation and the last tool is the clipping highlighter so this tool basically highlights um, black clipping in blue and white clipping in red you can adjust these parameters so I can uh, for example reduce the fall off to only target like really dark colors around here I could also decrease the maximum luminance in this case this shot is fairly well balanced so let's move over to another shot and here you can see that we have a lot of uh, clipping highlights in the background if I turn the maximum luminance fall off down to zero those parts of the image are completely clipped this tool can be used for example to check that the black and white levels are consistent between shots so let's say those are acceptable black levels i will just right click on one of the thumbnails click update all thumbnails and now you'll see that the black levels in these shots are kind of similar but this one is maybe a bit too bright so let me go to the clip and maybe lower the lift just a little bit now i can disable this tool right click on one of the clips and then update all thumbnails and now they should look at least fairly similar you can download these three utilities by clicking on the link in the description if you have any questions or feedback feel free to let me know in the comments and i wish you a great day